okay, this is my recording to you, because um, we spoke and uh, I had to do a recording for the reading recommendation, and I know it's due on Wednesday, but I was kind of excited to start, because I, I really do enjoy this literature, uh, I do enjoy Berserk a lot, and uh, I was just really excited to start the PowerPoint, so obviously, as you can read, or if you can read, because this font is kind of atrocious, I, I kind of, I, I switched up for the regular, like, um, like the actual text that's in my in my slides but this this one i just thought it was just it, it kind of like gives off berserk's vibe that's why i picked it but this is my reading recommendation of berserk um for my for like my introduction to it i just wanted to show like uh some of my favorite panels that i actually screenshotted um so while i was reading berserk while i re read almost any like a uh, manga i would like um i'd usually just take a screenshot of some of my favorite like little clips you know because uh i think in this manga that like the art it is some of the best like i've ever seen like uh you could tell it it take a lot of time like it it's very detailed artwork and i i really enjoy it i really enjoy a lot of it these are just some like even almost in every chapter you'll you'll see like um like a new artwork that's that it's it's amazing like honestly i uh, I really enjoy this manga a lot, and I, I hope that I can probably convince some people to pick it up, even though it's, it's sometimes, even, even the conversation that we had together the, um, about it, you seem to be a little off-put by, like, the graphic nature of some of the, the chapters, but I, I already do think it's good. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to move on to the next step. This is, uh, this is the summary I made for it. Um, I'm not gonna go through each bullet point like crazy, but uh, yeah, Berserk is classified as a, a dark fantasy manga, and it was uh, illustrated by Kentaro Miura. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. It's a Japanese name. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, but it follows Guts, a skilled mercenary and a swordsman in the medieval European inspired dark fantasy world. So, yeah, I have here all the arcs. These are all the arcs, and I have um every single. I have all the um. I just have all the the summaries for each one. You know, the Black Swords and Arc. This is where it first begins. It begins and it shows uh in the future. It's a uh, it's post like almost all the whole story happening. So it's uh, guts by himself, and you, you could tell he's just like, like you you could tell a whole bunch of shit has happened to him. He's by himself. He's fighting apostles, which are like the main evil people. It it, it goes more into it. I I go more. I can go more into it later. But then it goes into the Golden Age arc, and then this is the flashback explaining why Guts the way he is from the Black Swordsman arc. So it basically just details his uh, his past, um, how he joined the Band of Hawk, a mercenary group led by Griffith, the main the the main reason this whole story even happens. It's just it, it, a lot of crazy stuff happens with Griffith. Watch out for Griffith. That that's for sure. Watch out for Griffith. Um, and this arc explores themes of ambition, friendship, and betrayal. A lot of betrayal, honestly. A ton of betrayal. It, this arc, the Golden Age arc, is probably one of my least favorites for because of the amount of graphic stuff that happens. Um, shout out Casca. <laughs> then the Conviction arc. Um, this is after the Golden Age arc. After all that betrayal, it's pretty much just guts. Guts is angry and he's trying his best for vengeance. Pretty much, yeah. While protecting Casca, which is his love interest in the story, a lot of fucked up shit ha happens to her. Uh, Throughout, like, the whole reading, my whole reading, I feel very bad for her, honestly. Like, stuff that happens to her is super unfair, honestly. It, like, the whole, most of the story, like, you'll get a lot of tones of unfairness, like, towards the main character, Guts. It, it, stuff that happens to him isn't, isn't the best. And then... Oh, my God, sorry. I had a stopwatch call. And then here I have the, the Falcon Millennium Mark. Um, in this one, Guts assembles a new group of companions, uh... That's currently the arc I'm on right now, the Falcon Millennium arc. Um, the Fantasia arc, honestly, this is kind of spoilers, but I needed to put it so for the for summary's sake. So I just I googled quickly what the Fantasia arc was about. Um, so that's kind of spoilers. I kind of fucked. I don't know. I, I fuck with that. Man. I, it sounds cool. So I can't wait to get to that. Um, but yeah, throughout the series, uh, Guts goes through his battles with the Apostles, and the Apostles are. They basically were humans turned into demons by the God Hand. The God Hand is basically uh, demon kings. 
and they're just they they so basically the whole point on how you become an apostle is everybody has a fate in the story the whole m most of berserk is based on fate and timing um there's these things called behalts or behalts I, I don't know how it's pronounced the way it's spelled is kind of messed up it's this thingy right here this little egg face shit so basically the god of the world sends these out and each one of them have a fate and then when the person who is meant for the egg each egg has a person that is meant for when each person has their desire for what they want at its maximum so when they want it so bad at its maximum tier it will activate and it would send them to a different reality different realm where the god hand lives and the god hand will offer them their deepest desire for a sacrifice a sacrifice as in whatever they deem most valuable in their life they have to give it up for what they desire most and that's why all this stuff happens with griffith blah 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 band of hawk slain um my reasoning for people's like why why i think i should that people should read berserk because i'm obviously biased i love berserk i you can call me crazy if you want i don't care it's all right uh, my reason for why I think people should pick up Berserk and start reading it is that to me it is a very artistic piece of literature and has a lot of lovable and even unlovable characters that are villains. I think that's an important part. You know, it, it it's very good at making you hate a character and very good at making you love characters. Like I, there's there's a lot of comedic relief characters like Puck. Puck is a little fairy in um, towards like he introduced in the beginning and then they explain how he met Guts. It, it's very cool. He's a little tiny fairy and he's he's very cute. I don't have a picture of him, but. He's a very lovable character, and I, I really enjoy his character. And then there's characters like Griffith, kind of shitty. Um, also, you won't really know what's going to happen, which to me makes it a real joy, you know? I love suspense. I love action. I love, like, surprises, you know? I, I don't like knowing what's going to happen before it happens. No one likes spoilers. I understand and devise... I understand and advise that the graphic nature of it may make it unreadable to the average reader, but if you take if you look past the graphic nature of it, it is a very deep read in my opinion, and has a lot of things like that, that can be real to people, like the constant pursuit of your dream no matter what. That's that's one like um, appeal it could have to people if if you're a Griffith fan. I don't know, fuck Griffith. Um, my close read of this story, uh, I chose the, the opening. This is literally how the book opens. Once you open the first page, this is what it'll, you'll meet with. Um, in this world is the destiny of mankind controlled by some transcend, oh, entity or law. Is it like the hand of God hovering above? At least it is true that man has no control even over his own will. And my idea is the struggle against fate and the limits of human agency in a cruel and different universe. My close reading of this is um, the opening passage of Berserk elegantly explores the themes of fate, free will, and human existence in a harsh world. It immerses the reader in a philosophical dilemma that sets the tone for the epic dark fantasy to follow. Imagery such as the hand of God hovering above suggests an om om omnipotent, possibility, possibly malevolent force dictating human destiny, contrasting sharply with the brutal reality depicted in the manga. This tension between abstract metaphysical concept and harsh realities is palpable throughout. The statement, man has no control even over his own will, resonates deeply with the protagonist's guts, whose relentless determination as, as a berserker warrior underscores the struggle against forces beyond his control. This foreshadows how the manga will navigate its characters' battles against seemingly predetermined fates, highlighting the theme of human agency amidst a universe that appears indifferent and often antagonistic in their desires um yeah i this this beginning like um beginning part of the book really resonates on like how the whole story is and it, it it's it's very like i i can't stress enough how much this story kind of fucks over guts and i'm gonna I'm put it frank he they fuck him over whenever he has like the most like ounce of peace they it, strip him away of it it's really sad to see and it's all because of the brand of sacrifice that he has uh because spoiler griffith sacrificed the band of hawk which he was a part of and griffith 
what um, Griffith saw Guts as his best friend, and then instead of being sacrificed, Guts ended up surviving because another character in the manga saved him and Casca, his love interest, and now they live with this brand of sacrifice. I'm probably going on too long. I'm gonna end it up soon, but I, I really enjoy this. So I, lo I love talking about it. I'm sorry if I went over too long. My bad. Um, yeah, so basically he's fighting fate. With his brand of sacrifice, he is supposed to be mincemeat. And that whole point of fate is really like a large part of, uh, of Berserk. Like throughout the whole story, there's many points in it that um that you'll be like, damn, like even like the villains that sometimes they're like, you're going to die and then Guts doesn't die. And then they meet him in a later chapter and they're like, wow, you beat fate. A lot of it is him beating fate and him running away from fate and... You know, no one really knows how it's possible. It could be his anger. It could be his hatred. It could be vengeance. And, yeah, I just... That's really all I have to say about that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope I didn't go too much over. And I hope I could convince somebody to read Berserk. Um, if you show this in class. I don't even know if you're going to show this in class. If you watch it by yourself... Um, hi, sir. Thank you for everything. I really enjoyed your class. Uh, just to let you know, I, I gave you good on the spot. It's all right. But uh, thank you. Let me end this.